Welcome, this is the Algebra 1 end of course practice test number 1, question number 28. The question says which quadratic function has zeros at negative 7 and 9. Now for me, uh, I like this type of problem just because there's so many different ways that you can solve it, which is kind of cool. One of the ways that you can solve it is to factor, is to factor the quadratic. So. I'm going to uh, try to see what can give me negative 7 and 9. And remember, in order for it to be a 0, I have to set the answers next to 0. So I can factor them out. In this case, I end up with uh, a minus here, which means my signs are going to be different. So x plus and x minus. I need to find factors of 63 that give me positive 2. And I know that uh, one of the factors is 9 and 7. And since the, plus is, uh, the 2 is positive, I need to put the 9 after the plus. So that's that one factored. To find my zeros, I just set each of these equal to 0. So add 7 to both sides. x is equal to 7. And subtract 9 on this one. x is equal to negative 9. So negative 9 and 7, that's not what I'm looking for. It's easy to fall for the trap that, like, that's the answer because it's got plus and minus. You still have to go through the making it the zeros part of it. So don't get so excited. It's not the answer. So let's try b. Uh, this sign says that the answer is going to be different. This side says that the bigger number is going behind the minus. And since we already did the factor tree, I don't feel all that emotionally bound to the idea of working it out again. So I get x plus 7 and x minus 9. Set them equal to 0. Because I'm looking for their 0 value. So plus 9, x is equal to 9, x is equal to negative 7. So there it is. I found negative 7 and 9, so my answer is B. That's one way to do it. Another way that you can do the problem, and if you're happy with that method, see you guys later. Thanks for watching. If not, there's another way that you can do it. You see how it says Y equals here? We can actually graph this thing. So let me get the old calculator out here. I've been working the last problem, obviously. And I just start graphing things. I'm going to see X squared plus 2X mi uh, minus 63. So X squared plus 2x minus 63. And I'm going to graph it. And I can count and see that it doesn't cross at negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it does not cross at negative 9. There's probably some calculations you can do if you want to find some zeros there. Go for it. The left bound would be You'll start to see it moving around here in, in, in a little bit. It's kind of moving up. There it is. So there's my left bound. My right bound is right here. And my guess about where that zero is going to be is somewhere in that general vicinity, like right in there. It'll tell me my zero value is negative 9. So since that one is negative 9 and not regular 9, or not positive 9, it's not the answer. So for the next one, but it's easier just to count there. I felt like that was like way more work than I needed to do. If it's close, you may have to do that. Uh, for this one, x squared minus 2x minus 63. So I'm going to graph it. And I look for my zeros. And my zeros, I mean, where y is equal to 0. I'm looking for, if this is y is equal to 0, what are the values? So in this case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So negative 7 is one of them. And if you count this one up, you get positive 9. So that's another way you can do it. Now, there's actually a third way that you can do it that has even less mathematical uh, integrity than those two, even though those two did not have any. Uh, just this way is one way you can do it. What I'm going to do is take them separately, because the x can't stand for two things at once. It can only stand for one thing. So what I'm going to do is try to figure out if I plug in negative 7 here, for both, and then I just solve it out, will it give me zero? And if it does, it, there's a zero there. I mean, that's just the way that zeros work. So make sure that you put the negative 7 in parentheses, put the square on the outside. Otherwise, the calculator will end up doing it incorrectly. What it'll do is square it first, and then multiply by negative 1. So make sure that you do it the right way, and you get negative 28. But what I need it to be is a zero, so I know that's not the right answer. But on the next one, if I do... Um, negative 7 squared minus 2 times negative 7 minus 63, I may get different results. So I'm going to do negative 7 in parentheses squared minus 2 
minus 63. And when I type all this in, it gives me 0. If I do it with 9, make sure both of them work, by the way. So I'd get 81 here, minus 18, minus 63 more, gives me 0. So that's it. Both of the numbers, when I plug them in, gave me a 0, so I can say the answer to number 28 is B. And there's other ways that you could probably do it, but those are the ways I'm going to show you on this one. Hopefully one of them is one that you feel comfortable with using when it comes test time.